We have been to a lot of lakes in Switzerland. But today, we're taking a day trip from Interlaken to my favorite alpine lake, Oceanensee. So board the train with us and we'll tell you how to get there, how much it costs, what to do, and why Oceanensee might become your favorite Swiss lake too. Oceanensee is a teal blue lake nestled in the mountains above Kandersteg, which is located in the Berner Oberland of Switzerland, about an hour by train from Interlaken or Bern, and two and a half hours from Zermatt or Lucerne. To get there by train from Interlaken, you'll first travel from Interlaken West to Spietz, then from Spietz to Kandersteg. The total journey takes about an hour and five minutes, including a 20 minute wait in Spietz. So maximize that time by exiting the train station and walking across the street to enjoy the views over Lake Thun before catching your next train. You can also drive to Kandersteg too, but you can only reach Ocean and Say by riding the gondola or hiking. There are plenty of parking lots within a five minute walk of the cable car station, but if you take the train here, you'll have to walk about 15 minutes to get there. The gondola is open during both the summer and the winter seasons, although it's usually closed for maintenance from mid-March to mid-May, and then again from mid-October to mid-December. It runs from about 8.30 or 9 in the morning until 5 or 6 in the evening, depending on the season, and the ride to the top takes just a few minutes. Now you could actually hike up to Ocean and Zay, which would save you some money and allow you to visit when the cable car is closed, but it takes over an hour and includes nearly 500 meters of elevation gain. So since most of you probably plan on riding the cable car, here's what it costs. A standard round trip ticket for adults costs 30 Swiss francs. You get 50% off with a half fare card or Swiss travel pass, but the ride is 100% covered by the Berner Oberlin Regional Pass. And if you're planning on visiting as a day trip from Interlaken or another town in the Jungfrau region, then the Berner Oberlin Pass even includes completely free travel to and from Kandersteg. We talk a lot about the Berner Oberlin Pass in our ultimate guide to Swiss train passes, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. You can find links to that video and to buy the Berner Oberlin Pass in the description below. If you're traveling with children, kids aged 6 to 15 cost the 50% reduced price, or they're totally covered if you're traveling with the Swiss Family Card. And as usual, kids under 6 are completely free. And this is fun, you can actually buy a day pass for your dog for 5 Swiss francs. Tickets can be purchased at the bottom or top cable car stations or on the SBB mobile app, which we think is easiest. You simply scan your barcode to enter the cable car and you won't have to wait in line at the ticket window. But make sure you purchase a round trip ticket if you plan on riding both ways because two one-way tickets are actually more expensive. Once you're up here, there are two options. Star walking towards the lake or ride the mountain coaster. And you know we're always up for an adventure, so first we're gonna take a quick ride on the 750 meter long mountain coaster before we start our hike to the lake. Do not stop. That was super fun. I will say it wasn't the fastest coaster I've ever been on, but that just means you can push the pedal to the metal and go as fast as you can. As long as you don't get stuck behind slow people, like I did. Thanks to that adrenaline rush, at least for Brett, we're ready to start our hike and we're gonna follow trail number eight above the lake because, well, just wait until you see these views. But if you wanna skip the hike and just walk straight to the lake, you can follow trail number four and be there in about 25 minutes. It's an easy downhill walk on a beaten path that shouldn't be a problem for anyone with good shoes. Before we go, I did want to mention that there's an electric shuttle that can take you from here to the Berg Hotel at the lake. It runs daily from 11 until 4.30 or 5.30 depending on the season, with departures every 30 minutes or just whenever it's full. Priority is given to travelers with reduced mobility and they will not guarantee you a seat. And the last time we were here, it was pretty much always full. It's pretty pricey for a one-way ticket, but it is a great opportunity to make this beautiful place accessible to anybody. Okay, like Jana said, we're taking trail number eight, which is a three hour scenic loop that goes up above the lake and across to the other side. And since we've done this hike before, here are a few things that we learned. One, 
The trail signs are super easy to follow, but it's still a good idea to grab a map from the station just in case, or use the Swiss Topo app like we are. Two, it's pretty steep at first, but we promise it's worth it. 2.5, if you need to stop and catch your breath, you get your first glimpse of the lake. Three, if you come early in the morning and look closely enough, you might see Ebex up on that hillside up there. But alas, not today. Four, don't miss this postcard perfect view, which makes the hike up absolutely worth it. The first time we came here, we sat down on this bench to have a picnic, and another hiker stood on the bench and offered to take our photo. And it has been my favorite photo ever since. So do not hesitate to ask other people to take a picture for you here. Okay, we finished our snack, it's a hot day, and now I'm ready to go hike, hiking in the lake. I'm ready to go swimming in the lake, so let's get back to hiking. The trail does get narrower and a bit more exposed after you leave the viewpoints, which made us nervous before the first time we came. We had read a few trail reports, which made it sound kind of treacherous, but to be fair, there was still snow on the trail at the time, and that's what we were most worried about. But it turned out to be no problem. And after hiking this trail a couple of times, we'd say it's a pretty standard red mountain trail in Switzerland, which means you should be sure-footed and bring sturdy shoes, but it's accessible for most people. Oops, I forgot to mention this earlier, but there is nowhere to fill up your water bottle along the way, so make sure you bring enough water for whichever trail you choose. Thankfully, when you get to the back end of the lake, there are a few mountain restaurants where you can stop for a drink. The average temperature here in the summer is 25 degrees Celsius, but the water only warms to a cool 20 degrees. In fact, this is one of the few lakes that you can actually skate on in the winter. But it's pretty hot today, so we're getting in the lake anyway. In addition to swimming, you can rent a rowboat from Lago Mio for 29 francs an hour, or a fishing boat for half a day for 40 francs. But if you want to fish, you'll need to buy a day permit, which you can also get from Lago Mio. I thought the water was actually gonna be freezing cold, but it's so hot today that it is super refreshing. As you can see, there are plenty of places to spread out on a blanket and enjoy the lake, but you cannot camp at Ocean and Say because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well as a game and plant protection area. So if you wanna do some camping, you can do that down in Kondersteg at Camping Rendezvous. You'll see a bunch of grill spots like this, and from the Berg Hotel Ocean and Say, you can buy a picnic basket. So for 35 francs per person, you get a Bernice Oberlin bratwurst or a veggie sausage, bread, salad, chips, and Ocean and Say water. Now, that seems a little bit of a steep price to me because you could pay much less for a picnic from the grocery store. But we're gonna check out one of the six restaurants at Ocean and Say instead. Well, I guess they are technically only four restaurants here at the lake since we already passed two of them during our hike. There's Mountain House Arva, which has seasonal local cuisine, the Alpuzi food trucks with snacks and drinks, and Berg Stubli, which sells similar items as well. And then there's Berg Hotel Ocean and Zay. This has been run and owned by the same family for five generations. We're suckers for family owned businesses and yummy dishes like lamb, so that's where we're headed for lunch. If you're staying in Interlaken or Grindelwald, then Ocean and Zay is a great day trip. And if you're traveling between the Jungfrau region and Zermatt or Italy, it's also a great stop along the way, and you might even consider staying overnight in Kondersteg. A bonus tip is that the Berner Oberland Pass covers you all the way from Interlaken to Ocean and Say, and then all the way to Brig, which is not far from Zermatt, or even across the Italian border to Domodossola. A day trip to Ocean and Say also pairs really well with a visit here at Blause. It's just a 10 minute bus ride from Kondersteg, and the entry fee is nine to 13 francs per adult, depending on when you visit. And once you're here, you can walk in the nature park, enjoy a glass bottomed boat ride, see alpacas, visit a fish farm, dine in the cafe, bistro, or restaurant, or even stay overnight in the Blause Hotel and Spa. 
In case you can't tell, a morning and lunch at Ocean and Say, followed by an afternoon at Blouse, is like the perfect combination. So watch this next if you're looking for more day trips in the Jungfrau region covered by your Berner Overland Pass, and if you're wanting to ride another mountain coaster closer to Interlaken, then check this out too, and we'll see you in Switzerland.